Hi, good morning. In the recent several years, we have a very popular word or a buzzword in China that is a prescription medication. And I thought people are now often talking about the gene sequencing. What is the genetic sequencing or gene sequencing? And what are the opportunities and what are challenges for this technology? And what is the relation with what it has to do with? It has something to do with the container and the container. And today I have the distinguished honor to invite and will provide the solution from X to Y. Thank you, Amy. And、uh, I'm Wang Chao from X to Y, and it's a great pleasure for me to be here to talk about the application of the container technology and also for the needs in biopharmaceutical industry. And you may wonder why I am here because I'm in the biopharmaceutical industry. And、uh, actually, for container technology and Kubernetes, we have a wide spread application now in pharmaceutical and the biopharmaceutical industry. So here are words about exploring and、uh, our core. Of competitiveness within our big data platform and also gene sequencing technology, and、uh, we think about how to maximize the magic of a human being's、uh, gene. So, several backgrounds,、uh, knowledge. Well, because we are in the biopharmaceutical industry, and we do have a very basic, and I want to thank you a basic picture of. The human being. So we have a twenty-three、uh, base pair, pairs, and、uh, besides all these genes, and also we have a DNA in mitochondria as well. So we look at the DNA in bio,、uh, in, in the mitochondria, and also in the base pair to add them together. So basically, we have a trillion pairs of、uh, the DNA and the RNA, and there are also two pairs of base pairs. So all together, we got the six billion. All together, we got the twenty thousand to twenty-five thousand DNA. It can decide your height, your weight. And、uh, your susceptibility to certain drugs, as well as your susceptibility to certain diseases. And、uh, as a developer, even how much you have your hair is also relevant to your genes. When we、uh, detect the DNA, we will be having those、uh, legal like. Sequencing, and they become the sequencing of your DNA. The right hand side, we do have the IBM zero twenty nine. It is a binary system, and you can also use the punch pass to have those dots. It is actually a simulated version. We have、uh, printed the great CNCF twenty eighteen sequencing DNA. Essentially speaking, it is the code of、uh, life. Comparing to the binary code, there are a lot of similarities in my personal understanding. You may start to ask me such a question: Each of us got our own genes, and how can you get those data? This is the overall workflow. There are two different approaches. We usually suggest that you use the saliva. We take the epithelial cells from the saliva to take the DNA. When the saliva is sent to a lab, we will get some preparations. We need to have the nuclear acid isolation, and then we also set up the database. When the preparation completes, we will run it on the machines. We have the biochips. We also got WES exome testing, as well as the whole genome sequencing. Those data can become the raw data source. The size of the raw data, whole genome sequencing is around 150 gigabytes, and for exome, it's around 60 to 70 gigabytes. At the, the chips, because we only choose. The data we need the most, but still at around 15 megabytes. So those data are not so large in size. From 150 to 60 to 15 megabytes, we take a look at the whole range of data sets. The genome data of the, an individual can be huge, and that's only about the genome. We also have the protein、uh, omics as well as、uh, the transcriptomics. Above all of those data, it must be on 150 gigabytes. When we got the data, we get into the analysis. First step, we have to do a quality control. We have to verify the authenticity of those data source. 
the second step, where the Kubernetes and the container that is not a session were turned off. For those biomimesis, we want to create a pipeline and we want to use it automatically. The third phase, since we got the genetic types of an individual, we have to analyze exactly how to benchmark it with a certain symptoms or to your symptoms. We like to drink coffee. Drinking coffee and the metabolites relevant to some of your gene types. So we put together all of the data, set up the database, and then try to interpret those data. In order to handle the large amount of computing needs from phase 1 to phase 3, we run into a lot of complexity and difficulties. Throughout our sequencing center, we will usually have our own private cloud database. On those data centers, we must be familiar with HPC already. We may have uh, the shared storage, we may have our own clusters, and the cluster may also be having certain management software available. But during the utilization, with the data escalation and the rise of our business volume, and we do have an elasticity to our business requirements, that may lead to the resource management very difficult, and we are running into significant challenges, particularly on computing and storage. Another major challenge facing us is, in the biologic industry, an uh, important feature of us is we have very segmented tools. In addition to have around 5,000 tool sets we have to use, they are all very small scale. We have to run into different scripts. We all need to turn the different scripts into one specific pipeline. Those tools are spreaded not only in the genome sequencing, we have the transgenomics, the proteinomics. Each tool sets are different. Another important feature is some of the tools is open source, some of them are closed to loop. The language we use is very different. We usually use our language or even Python or some of the tools in the lower hierarchy you may use the C. Those tools are actually a huge challenge for daily maintenance, including how to deploy it, how to patch them, how to have them in the pipeline, how to have the resources allocated and utilize them more accurately. We are running quite big problems constantly. So we do have an internal team, not many people, but we have done thorough study. We think the Kubernetes and the container can be quite suitable to our specific situation. When we set up this uh, platform, it's relevant to Kubernetes and the cloud native uh, in several different areas. We have the big data platform. The big data platform puts the 100 gigabytes of the data in the big data platform directly. We also got some other biological database. Those files, documentation will all be stored in our big data platform altogether. With the data available, on top of it, we have machine learning as well as the Spark. Because Spark also natively supports Kubernetes already, so we started to include the Spark as well. We have a referral system established. We can also individualize the genetic sequencing projects. Another will be the biologic pipeline. This pipeline can be migrated from HPC to Kubernetes already completely now. As a container, we got all of the biological tools patched into specific segments and they have them stored as a container. We also studied our own workflow engine. The workflow engine can be used in a standard language to have them uh, depicted. The benefit is in our private cloud and the public cloud environment, we can seamlessly migrate and uh, integrate. That also brings us a lot of uh, other advantages. The code we write in the past can be quite old scripts. Some of them are even not maintained anymore. With those warehouse available, we can have those tools put together. So the next colleague, when they join the company, the workflow can also be reused and replicated. Replication has a special feature in biologics. To the biological experiments, the reusability is a high and compulsory requirement. From input to output, if it is the reusability and replicability has to be guaranteed. 
Based on the Jeans referral system, we are trying to run Spark on KBS instances directly. This referral system is based on several thoughts. In the future, we all got our genetic data stored somewhere. Those genetic data may be you are intolerant to dairy products. You might be、uh, sensitive to the coffee. Coffee, and we can develop a smart application based on our genetic data, help you to manage your daily work and daily life, encourage you to do exercises. We can also send you some warning signals. In our genes, we do have some risk factors. If you don't look into those, you may suffer from disease and trigger some unwanted response. Last word to share from me. We do have another big one. We also got the Hadoop scenario. In the future, if、uh, Kubernetes can include and have them all integratedly managed, that will be important to us. That can even simplify our workflow and process. If we can really realize this, Kubernetes will even grow better. In the end, of course, best wishes to everyone. Thank you to Mr. Wang Chao for the sharing. Well, congratulate for applying cloud native to genetic sequencing already. For the next couple of minutes, I want to ask a question: Why do you want to choose cloud native and container technologies in the very beginning? You were on HPC before. Comparing HPC and cloud native and containers, what are the biggest differences, and why cloud native and Kubernetes can bring you some commercial value? In the beginning, when we were on Kubernetes and container, the most attractive point is because our biologic software using container, we can have them well managed, we can have it upgraded and have them patched. At、uh, Kubernetes, a workflow management, the reusability, replicability, and the, the resource orchestration become much simpler. When we try to scale up HPC environment in past, that was basically headache. So the migration from HPC environment to cloud native or container environment, what are the challenges that you have encountered? To most of us, our IT professional system is not that strong. When we are doing our research on ourselves, to Kubernetes and、uh, container, that's actually quite challenging. So our team spend around tens of person working on the research on Kubernetes and the container alone. We thought that if there is really a way to simplify the biologic genetic sequencing workflow, that can be quite appealing. Because we are not from the IT background anyway, so that、uh, takes a lot some help. The last question for you is: In the future, in your industry, do you have any future roadmap and planning? For genetic sequencing platform, we are also trying to deploy it in a public cloud. Where the big data analytics and the machine learning capabilities build up, we want to have those capabilities and the features launched in a holistic ecosystem. We want to provide it as a service to the R&D organization, or the nutritionists, the future doctors, physicians, and the, the genetic sequencing experts. They can use their service on top of our platforms. We also encourage our partners to develop the applications on our platform. If it becomes an ecosystem platform, since genetic data is only the basics, with genetic data you can use it for all different purposes. I wish you success in the future. Thank you. Last couple of minutes, in addition to introducing Spring Container Application. What other things we have been doing? As Mr. Liao from Harvard said, there is a container platform with CCE, CCI. CCI is a cloud container engine. It is a, a container engine. And、uh, we also got a cloud container instance. It is a Kubernetes, Kubernetes container service. There is also front-end application orchestration and maintenance and servicing management. There is also database and all different acceleration from the chipset. The whole platform is for one purpose alone. We want to simplify the user experience so they can use the container service as soon as possible. As of the genetic sequencing experts, for them to use the container technology, there are also several challenges. The first problem is, like we have heard in the beginning, they were usually on HPC on the edge. Environment. If you want them to use Kubernetes and、uh, cloud native and the container, there are certain learning curves. You have to learn Kubernetes 
and so many knowledge about the containers, they also need to learn how to write their own script and genetic sequencing action applications. How to use those on the container services? They want to do a really, really long learning curve, and that also costs a lot. The second question is: in genetic sequencing, the workflow management is very important and also critical. On top of the Kubernetes platform, in such a user cases, we still have a long way to go. So, Huawei Cloud is a point for this. Focusing on the interface points, points on top of Kubernetes, we have another envelope about the genetic sequencing layer, abstraction layer. The main purpose is to have this abstraction layer provided to the genetic sequencing professionals directly. They just need to focus on what they are most good at. They can also use what they are familiar with to compute applications, so they can enjoy cloud native and the most featured of cube methods and the containers. This abstraction layer is called the GCS, Gene Container Service. As Mr. Liao from Huawei has also said, they share the web with the news. GCS, which was developed by Huawei, will be open source. The name of the open source project is called Kubejin. Kubejin project contains a out of the box genetic sequencing workflow management framework. We call the command line tools as well as a workflow engine, a such as the detectors as well as the best practices for one. Genome sequencing group. This project is currently in preview. Preview means it is still not complete and not perfect. So we like to call for all of the community to work with us, so the project can be growing stronger and robust in the future. We will also be welcoming the genetic experts and the biologic experts to join us in our workshops, telling us their needs and demands, what their actual user instances in the scenario. So pushing projects can really be helpful for them. We can also provide the open source projects to them, reducing their workload on the learning curve, so they can focus their professionalism on the biologic and genetic. Sequencing relation as well as application to the user. This uh, open source project for Huawei is uh, for the purpose, like uh, Mr. Wang said, we want to create a holistic ecosystem so all of the members can get together to reduce the technical barriers and the threshold to be our biologics or genetic sequencing professionals. We can spend their most valuable assets in the actual application of genetic development to bring a higher value to our daily life. So in the future, possibly we can be healthier, we can live uh, a uh, longer life. Thank you for your time. Also, would like to say thank you to our lab biologists and the genetic professionals for contributing to the society's well-being. Thank you.